Hey everybody, it's Craig Bechter here from CraigBechter.com and in this video we're going to talk about the difference between importing raw files and JPEG files, the difference in editing those files, and also I'm going to talk about the color checker passport. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video, I got a bit of a surprise for you. Anyway, let's get started. So as soon as I plugged into my camera, uh, it said import your photos. So whether you're using raw files or JPEG files, there's no difference. You can import them quickly into Lightroom. So here we have a series of images. Now let's just go to the develop module. We'll just click on there. Now here's a little fisherman. This is just a local guy. This is how we all dress here. I'm from Nova Scotia. And I'm just going to back out a bit. Now with the color checker passport, you can use the gray custom white balance card to set your white balance. Or if your camera allows, you can set your white balance to whatever you want. So I set my camera to 5600. I was using an Einstein head. Uh, they usually shoot around 5600 Kelvin, so I set my camera to that. I took a picture of this, and then when I got over to this picture, it said my white balance, if I go to right here, as shot, it said my white balance was 6200, not 5600, and plus 25. So that's up here in the top right of your development module. Now with the color checker, I just got a text, but I'll keep on going. But anyway, with the color checker passport, you can see here, what this allows me to do is create a custom color profile. So what you do is you take this image and you import it into the software. So I'm just going to close Lightroom. So if you have Lightroom open and you create this profile, it's not going to work. So basically all you do is you take the image of the color checker passport, which I know where that is because I did this just earlier. And I can come down here and say Lightroom tutorial and then that's where my images are. And I believe it was the second image. And then what I would do is just drag the image over and then it would do its thing in the software and then I would create a custom color profile. Now I've already gone ahead and done that so we don't have to sit through that. So here we are. We're going to reopen Lightroom because like I said, if you have Lightroom open, it won't see the custom color profile. Now if you come over here to the right and we come on down, you can see right here, camera calibration. Now if we're using a raw file, we can set a custom color profile. If we're using a JPEG, we can't do that. So we don't have that option. So you can see right here, if I click on this image, right under soft proofing, if I click on the image, you'll see that this image here is a DNG. And that's uh, another option you have when you import into Lightroom. Uh, the standard Canon uh, file is a CR2. You can convert it to a DNG. Anyway, it doesn't really matter whether you leave it as CR2 or DNG. Now what we want to do is come down to camera calibration. You can see I've already set it for Fisherman. But by default, it's set at Adobe Standard. So basically, I create the custom color profile in the software. I come over here, and then I say I want to choose the Fisherman profile that I created. And here it is here. So this sets a custom color profile for the camera, the lens, and the lighting situation that I'm in. Now, I also check these two, enable profile corrections, and remove chromatic aberration. And then what I'll do is I'll come up here to the white balance tool, the little eyedropper, and if it's a portrait, I click on the first box and it shifted the color balance from 6200 plus 25 to plus 22. So the gray card really set us up with a really pretty good accurate color balance. Now let's talk about the differences between RAW and JPEG. Now with JPEG, you can pick the uh, import preferences. So in a sense, when you come down here and you see Adobe Standard, in my camera anyway, the Canon 5D Mark III, there's different settings. You have your faithful, your landscape, your neutral, your portrait. And what this does, it adjusts the sharpness, the contrast, and the color. And so it imprints a profile onto the JPEG. Now, when you shoot in RAW, it's just RAW. It's just RAW information. So you have some flexibility. And I like to have that flexibility, so I shoot in RAW. Now, let me show you the difference here. If you come up here, I have these different color balance settings. I have flash, fluorescent, tungsten. Now, when I click on these, watch how the image changes. If I click on tungsten, it really takes a shift to the blue. And if I click on flash, well, then it's more for a flash setting, which I was using. If I click on daylight, then we also have a different setting. It's 5500. So you really have a lot of control over your white balance settings. And as far as setting that custom color profile. Now, if I come over to JPEG, this is a JPEG image. And I like the raw image a lot better. I mean, I can see a lot more detail in it. And if I click on the JPEG, this has a color profile already embedded in the camera. And there's not as much that I can do to it. If we come up to our white balance, we have as shot, auto, or custom. 
and it's just it sort of takes away some of our white balance adjustments and then if i come down to the custom color profile well i have the embedded profile i can't switch that so for me i like to shoot in raw and i like to use the color checker passport and then i know that's what the yellow looked like when i shot it it looked like that now whether i want to change that yellow or warm it up you know that's really up to me if i'm doing fashion or if i'm doing product photography you want to have accurate colors and you want to know that that red is the red that you were shooting that day or that yellow so for me i like to shoot in raw and i like to use a color checker passport so that's just me but uh, I, I think if you don't already shoot in raw go ahead it doesn't make a big difference other than the file sizes are a little larger but it does give you some more leeway now in regards to adjusting the exposure you can adjust the exposure in a RAW file. You can really get a lot of coverage. Say you shot it and it was a little dark, and you can really bring that up. Now, you can also do that in JPEG, too. Although you may not get as good a result, it, you still can do that. But I, if I were you, I would just shoot in RAW if you have the uh, hard drive space. And if you don't, just buy an external hard drive. They're pretty affordable these days. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And make sure you check out my free mini photography course. That was a surprise I had for you for the end. I put a free uh, mini photography course together where I go behind the scenes of a photo shoot. So you can click on the link below this video and you can access that video. So I think you should really check that out. And so make sure you subscribe too while you're here and check out the rest of my videos. I'll see you in the next one.